Hello and welcome to webinar number three on exam technique. And in this webinar, we're going to talk about getting started in your exam and good time management during your exam. Don't forget you can get a copy of our exam technique booklet on our website for free. So what's the overall idea when you're in your exam and you've just received your exam paper? So first of all, you want to get off to a great start and build some momentum and then make the most of your time while you're in that exam. We're going to show you how. First of all, for Leaving Cert students. So the first thing you do when you get your exam paper is invest 10 minutes to read through the paper, jot down some notes, and choose the best questions for you. Because for Leaving Cert 2023, you have an element of choice. So it's really important to pick the questions that are going to suit you best and help you to get the highest grade possible. So how do you go about choosing your questions? Well, we spoke about this in a previous webinar. Just a quick reminder. This applies to Leaving Cert 2023, what we're going to talk about now. So, you must complete five out of six questions in Section A. You must complete three out of four questions in Section B. Now, this was different in the last couple of years, and before that, there was no choice at all. So, just bear in mind that this is the amount of choice that you have this year, and choose wisely. Now, when it comes to answering your first question, here's our recommendations. So start with the Section A questions and then move on to Section B. The Section A questions are generally less complicated than the Section B questions, so it's probably better to do Section A questions first to ease yourself into the exam. Now you might decide to start with your favourite question. Rather than starting with question 1, you don't have to. You can start with your favourite question out of Section A. If you wish, you can start with the first question and work through them methodically in numerical order. It's really up to you. One thing that is very important, regardless of what your approach is, it's really important to track your time and get started. So don't spend too much time. We said 10 minutes to read over the paper, uh, eliminate your questions that you're not going to do, and then get stuck in, get started, and start building some momentum. So it's important then to keep on track. So just a quick reminder of the timing strategy. This is for Leaving Cert 2023. So 10 minutes to read over the paper and choose your questions. So that really means choose which question in Section A you're going to eliminate, choose which question in Section B you're going to eliminate. And we covered this in more detail in Webinar 1. So you have 13 minutes for every Section A question. So you have five questions and 13 minutes each, which is about 65 minutes. Then for Section B, you have three questions out of four to do. So roughly allocate 23 minutes for those for an approximate total of 69 or 70 minutes. So that means that you're allowing about 65 minutes for Section A and about 69 minutes for Section B because they both have roughly the same amount of marks. If you do this, that will leave you with about five or six minutes at the end as a safety net, as we discussed before, um, for checking, for correcting, and just in case you run over. Now, all of this is based on the assumption that you don't do any spare questions. We don't recommend that you do spare questions. We recommend that you do five out of six in Section A and and give them full focus and do them as best you can and do three out of four in section B and again put all your energy into those three rather than trying to do spare questions that are probably your weakest question anyway. So in terms of time management just some general principles don't rush through the questions obviously that that could lead to you making mistakes there is enough time to do the questions methodically and steadily don't get bogged down in any question so again don't overrun on uh, any question and don't get bogged down in any small part of a question. If you really can't do it, then do your best, do your attempt, and then move on. You might get time at the end to come back to it, but you don't want your other questions to suffer because you got bogged down in something. Very important one this. Once you've chosen your eight questions, complete them all fully. So never leave a blank answer or never leave a blank part of an answer. There are marks allocated to every part of every question. So make sure that you do at least an attempt on every single part. This can make a big difference to your grade. And as I say, don't forget your attempt marks. Even if you think that you can't get it right, have a go at it. You may make more progress than you expected. You may surprise yourself. And even if you don't, you will get marks for attempting if you put down a decent attempt. I'm sure you've heard this from your teachers many times. Never ever leave the exam early. You're there for two and a half hours. You might as well make the most of it and give a good account of yourself as possible. So stay the course, stay for the two and a half hours, and if you've run out of questions, go back over the questions that you've done, check for any errors, do some basic checks on your answers, and correct any that you find are wrong. Any of them that you didn't manage to complete, have another go at them. So there's 
plenty of things that you can do with that time, but leaving early is really not going to help your grade. Once you get out of the exam, feel free to have a brief post-mortem to help you to process the exam a little bit and talk to your friends, compare notes if you want, but please do put a time limit on that. Don't spend a huge amount of time on this. I wouldn't advise spending too much time going on the internet to see what other people thought because you will have other exams after your maths, so it's better to focus on your paper too or on your other subjects. So if you want to allow yourself a little bit of a post-mortem, that's fine, but try and keep a limit on that and move on. So just to talk briefly about our exam technique booklet, this is a unique resource that we have published over the last 12 years. You can download it for free on our website at themathstutor.ie forward slash booklet. So you can grab a copy of that. It contains a lot of the information that we've covered in these webinars and uh, it's all in one handy guide. So I highly recommend that you download that, print it off if you can, and keep it with your maths books and start applying the techniques as soon as possible. So that's the end of this webinar, webinar three. We have one more coming up. And if you have any questions on this particular webinar, please feel free to add them in the comments. Talk to you soon. Now for our junior cycle people, we're just going to talk about how to get started in the exam. So in terms of timings, allow yourself five minutes to read through the paper and jot down some notes. Bear in mind that you don't have any choice in the paper. You have to complete all questions in your exam paper. So there's no element of choice, but it is good to familiarize yourself with the questions that have come up. Then without delay, get on to answering your first question. So as I say, you must answer all questions on your paper. You've only got one paper and you have to answer all questions for junior cycle. So how you go about this depends on your own preference. You might want to start with your favorite question just to ease yourself into the exam. So if there's a particular topic that you like, or if you see a question that looks very approachable, then you might want to start with that one. Alternatively, you might decide, I'm just going to start on question one and I'm just going to work my way through methodically. So really, it's up to you. It depends what you like. And I would suggest doing past papers and sample papers and figuring out which of those approaches is going to work best for you. Regardless of what you do, it's very important to track your time. So with that in mind, get started on your first question, get stuck in and start building up some momentum. Of course, it's very important to stay on track then. So just going to talk about the timing strategy. So for junior cycle students, we suggest that you allow five minutes to read the paper. The timings are actually given on the papers and you'll see that in the past papers as well. So that's quite handy. You don't know how many marks have been given, but it's going to be roughly in proportion to the amount of time. So the best thing to do is follow the examiner's advice and just follow the timings that they've recommended. Allow yourself five minutes at the end to go back over your questions, check your answers, do any corrections that are needed and to have a little bit of a safety cushion in case you overrun slightly on any question. So just a little bit more about time management. So it's very important that you don't rush through any question. If you rush too much, this can lead to mistakes. So you will be given enough time to answer each question. The time is already allocated. So you can just use the time that you're given to work steadily through the questions and then move on to the next one. Make sure that you don't get bogged down in one question. There are marks for every question. And if you spend too much time on one question, then you will have less time for the other questions and you might have to end up rushing. So try not to get bogged down in any full question. Try not to get bogged down in any part of any question. Of course, it's very important to attempt all parts of all questions. If you leave a blank answer, you're going to get zero for that. If you leave a blank part of a question, you're going to get zero for that. So every question should be attempted at least. If you see a question that looks quite difficult, at least have a go at it. You might be surprised. You might be able to work yourself into the solution. And even if you don't, if you put down a decent attempt, you're going to get marks for those attempts. And those attempt marks can really add up. It's very important that you never leave your exam early. You've just got two hours now for junior cycle to represent three years of hard work. You've only got one paper, two hours. So you want to make the most of that time because your grade is fully based on those two hours. If you find that you're stuck and you've run out of questions that you can do, go back over the ones that you've done, check your answers. Any that you have left blank, make an attempt on those. Try and pick up as many marks as you can. Give it your full focus for two hours. And after that, you can walk out of the exam knowing that you've done your best. And then finally, if you want to have a brief post-mortem with your friends about what came up, how you did, what went well, what didn't go so well, that's fine. We just suggest that you put a limit on how long you spend on this. Don't spend too much time chatting about this or going on the internet to find out how other people did. You can have a post-mortem just to get it out of your system so that you can move on and think about your next exam. But please don't spend too much time on it. Don't forget, our exam technique booklet is available free of charge on our website.
So this booklet covers all of the material that we have gone over in these webinars. It's a great little resource to have, and I would suggest that you download it and print it and keep it with your exam papers and your maths book. So you can find that on themathstutor.ie forward slash booklet. Please feel free to share that with your friends as well. So that's it for this webinar. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and we'll see you in the next webinar. Thank you.